Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a webinar on varicose vein treatments. My name is Louise and I'm your host this evening. Our expert presenter, who you can see on screen, is Mr. Aaron Sweeney. He's our consultant vascular surgeon. This presentation will be followed by a question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question during or after the presentation, please do so using the Q&A icon, which is at the bottom of your screen. This can be done with or without giving your name. Please note the session is recorded, so if you do provide your name, it will show up in the recording. If you'd like to book a consultation, we'll provide contact details at the end of this session and a discount for joining this session. I'll now hand over to Mr. Aaron Sweeney and you'll hear from me again shortly. Over to you, Aaron. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Aaron Sweeney and um, Many years ago, when I was a junior doctor, uh, we used to operate on veins almost every day of the week. And the usual operation was uh, stripping. That involved cuts and a general anesthetic and pulling veins out. And it was pretty brutal. And then in around about 1999, myself and Eddie Challoner, who's the other vascular surgeon here, uh, we saw a wonderful procedure uh, that started in New York and involved threading little lasers up the inside of veins rather than pulling them out. It looked quite dainty. It worked moderately well. And then over the next few years, uh, we did a lot of research on this and essentially fine tuned it, got the right settings and made it work properly. And then it was about 2005 that we rolled this out in the NHS in the first instance and started uh, offering uh, laser treatment for veins. So laser treatment for varicose veins is not the same as some James Bond movie where we zap people from outside. It's actually threading little small lasers, which are rather like little wires up the inside of a vein. We damage that vein from the inside and the vein shrivels up and uh, disappears. So I'm a vascular surgeon um, and that just means I'm trained in doing all bits with arteries and veins. And I've done a fair few uh, laser treatments. Uh, I've been doing it all the time uh, since 2005. So uh, obviously you do quite a few. <laughs> and next slide, please. So what we're going to try and talk about is uh, what we do here at Benetton Hospital. I'll tell you a little bit about what varicose veins are, the different treatments that are available. And the, probably the most important thing is a question and answer session at the end, because most people who come to these webinars have varicose veins already. You, many people have a question. I find webinars great because you don't feel you can, sometimes I think in, um, if you're in an audience, it's a bit embarrassing asking questions, but on webinars, people can often type a question and uh, you'd be surprised what we're asked and very few of them um, are inappropriate. Um, and hopefully I can answer all those uh, easily for you. Uh, next slide, please. So Benenton Hospital, uh, we are the largest provider of varicose vein treatments in the whole of the UK uh, at the moment. I have to say that a few years ago was quite hard to do, but not anymore. This uh, varicose vein surgery seems to almost have disappeared from the NHS, sadly, but uh, we still, to a very large amount here, well over a thousand a year. Myself and Eddie do probably a thousand each per year, which is quite a lot for a, um, a single operation. We're constantly checked down here, so the CQC come in and monitor us and check all our results, and we have to audit everything to make sure that we do it correctly and have um, high satisfaction uh, results. Uh, next slide, please. So sometimes people are a little confused about what are varicose veins. So if I tell you that, uh, there's, you have an artery and a vein in your leg. The artery brings the blood down your leg, uh, feeds the muscle with oxygen and a small amount goes to your skin. And then veins take the blood back up your leg, up to your heart where it's pumped again. I think it's helpful to think of varicose veins like a Christmas tree. You have one main vein running up your leg, which is called your deep vein. And then you have hundreds of smaller veins uh, or branches joining that deep vein. Most of those branches are from muscle. 
They're quite big, with large amounts of blood flowing in them. But you do have some smaller veins which drain the skin. And unfortunately, they have a bit of a struggle getting up your leg. They're called your saphenous veins and they have little valves in them to keep everything going uphill. They're normally small, about the size of a shoelace. And unfortunately, if the valves fail in these veins, they swell a little bit, the blood stops flowing upwards. It can sometimes flow backwards. And then you might notice them as little bumpy uh, varicose veins on your leg. Veins cause many different problems. Sometimes they can start with a little bit of swelling. Occasionally you can see loads of varicose veins, but quite often you only see very small veins or don't even see them at all. But you do tend to get aching, uh, legs can feel heavy. Cramping at night is one of the common uh, symptoms. So many of, many of the patients I see are, are taking quinine uh, tablets to try and relieve cramp, but actually the cramp is all caused by their varicose veins. The problem with varicose veins is that they can make your skin quite dry and itchy and unhealthy. And the main medical reason for treating veins is that because if your skin has become sore, itchy or discolored, you're much more likely to go on and develop an ulcer. And developing an ulcer is essentially a failure of medical treatment because your skin will break down, it never goes back to normal, and it takes quite a long time and a lot of dressings and a lot of embarrassment trying to get it to uh, heal properly. Next slide, please. So there are quite a few different treatments with varicose veins. There is, of course, the old treatment of stripping, which is still done in places, but for the most part, that is just not done anymore. There are two main ways of treating veins. Uh, really, it's threading something up the inside of the vein or injecting something up the inside of the vein. I would prefer to use a little laser, but there are other treatments available. Um, and most of them can be done under a local anesthetic. Uh, we've got extensive experience of using a laser in, 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 in Benetton, which works quite nicely. Um, but I'll run through a few extra treatments that are available because as with all these things, they appear on the internet. And there are multiple treatments available and often people try to advertise them to say one is better than the other. In fact, most of the treatments that are available now are equally good uh, when they're done by somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so I thought I'd just show you some veins because uh, people sometimes wonder, are they varicose veins or are they dangerous? So you usually grade varicose veins from one to six, one being uh, small ones and six being troublesome ones. Grade one is where they're just about uh, visible. They're commonly small thread veins. They're usually not uh, a problem. Um, many people like them treated and you can certainly have them treated. Uh, mostly we treat those with small injections, um, but uh, they're generally not troublesome, but can occasionally give you quite a lot of itch. Uh, but for the most part, you probably regard those as uh, cosmetic. Uh, next slide. Grade two, when they're a little larger, you can just about feel them. Most people have these. Again, they're generally not troublesome, uh, and I wouldn't be pushing people to have an operation on health re reasons, uh, on health grounds for these, but they can be treated uh, usually with, again, with a little bit of sclerotherapy. The next, the next slide. Grade three is really where things start to get a little bit interesting because they're usually veins that are bulky. Uh, they're giving people some pain, swelling usually. And these veins, um, I mean, on that slide, they're quite large, but uh, the size of the vein it doesn't really matter. Some people have huge uh, varicose veins and no trouble whatsoever. And other people can have a relatively small vein uh, but give them a really a great deal of trouble. But usually around this level, uh, we would suggest having something uh, done. And next slide. So then you get to grade four, and this is where things start to get a bit complicated. This is where veins are causing damage to your skin. That doesn't happen in everyone. So we know that about 20% of the population will get a varicose vein. Uh, 
But of that 20%, about a quarter go on to have some skin damage. So three quarters don't. But if you do get skin damage, then that's something that uh, you probably need to have treated because it will just progress. And it is wonderful to treat it at this stage because you can essentially reverse everything, get people back to normal, uh, and essentially have a procedure and a few weeks later uh, forget about uh, everything and get back to being completely normal. Uh, we'll go to the next slide just briefly. It's a bit grim. Uh, this is what happens uh, for grades five and six. It's where the skin just becomes so inflamed and sore that it starts to peel away. Often people have had varicose veins for many years. Their skin has been quite sore and they haven't kind of caught on that the sore skin is actually caused by the varicose vein. It's not always that obvious, even to general practitioners. And sometimes people go for years having various hydrocortisone creams and E45, etc. And then finally, a re relatively minor injury occurs and all of a sudden the skin breaks down. And then you have quite a lot of trouble bec because quite a few nerves near the ankle, uh, just near your funny bone. And if you have an ulcer, Often that same nerve that supplies your funny bone supplies the ulcer. And I don't think there's anything funny about that. It is really, really painful. Next slide. So we usually treat uh, varicose veins with a laser. Uh, this slide can be a little bit confusing, but if I orientate you a little bit, that's the inside of somebody's right uh, thigh. So looking at it from the inside. So you have a main vein running up the inside of the leg, loads of little branches like a Christmas tree, but the commonest branch to stop working actually joins the deep vein right in your groin. It comes out, runs down the inside of your thigh. It's normally about a centimeter or so under the skin. You don't usually see it. Branches of that vein pop up on the surface, usually in your calf, and they can be quite small. And people wonder why they're getting so much trouble but the reason is that they may have 40 centimeters of vein in their uh, thigh, rather like a yard of ale sitting there, allowing pressure to build up as the day goes on and putting pressure then on a, what looks like a relatively small vein, but producing quite a lot of symptoms. So that vein is the commonest vein we treat. So we scan your leg with an ultrasound. We can see this vein and somewhere along its length, we thread the little laser in up the inside. We pass that laser right the way up the inside. And then normally with local anesthetic, we inject a little local anesthetic the whole way down your leg. And we kind of produce a sausage of local anesthetic that surrounds the vein. And then we laser the vein. And a laser is just a fancy way of burning something. So we give a very controlled burn or singe to the inside of that vein. It shrivels up. It does uh, take a few weeks to disintegrate. And for most people, they tell me it feels like a dental appointment, not quite root canal work, but about as stressful as a dental appointment. We try to make it similar, in, uh, similar to that appointment in that we have you walk straight into the uh, operating theatre. You have your vein treated, you walk out the other side. We have you sit down, have a cup of tea, make sure you feel okay. That probably takes about half an hour. And then we... Uh, escort you out of the hospital. Most people walk out the door um, and I think they're much happier afterwards. Uh, I think most people feel a bit stressful about having any kind of procedure done. Uh, next slide, please. So there are quite a few things you can hear about, but if I tell you that they are essentially divided in two. So one is a heat-based treatment and the other is a chemical. So the chemical-based treatment, you may hear of things called foam sclerotherapy or sclerotherapy or even glue. And what that involves is injecting something into the vein, producing a reaction on the inside of that vein. The vein usually don't like that at all. Veins usually don't like that at all, and they uh, go a bit hard. And then you're waiting for your body to essentially dissolve that vein away. That often takes a little bit of time. That's not our preferred treatment for larger veins, uh, but it is our preferred treatment for the smaller uh, thread vein type uh, varicosities. We would usually thread a little laser up so there's EVLT, 
The next treatment is called radio frequency ablation. Uh, that's actually electricity. Uh, and there's a microwave type treatment. They are essentially all the same. And although many argue about which is the best, the proper research trials that have been done show that there's no real difference. They all work equally well, and it's up to uh, your preference. Uh, so I think lasers, radio frequency ablation work equally well. They certainly work better than foam sclerotherapy, which has a much higher recurrence rate. Next slide. So we like to see you uh, first and just run through things. We generally do an ultrasound when we see you. An ultrasound scanner has kind of become the stethoscope. Uh, uh, our stethoscope, we uh, use it all the time. It just gives us a wonderful view on the inside of your leg uh, and allows us to make give you a few options. What we will do is tell you exactly what you have and uh, give you the options that are available to you because of course it's your choice if you choose to have anything done. I would rarely push someone to have a procedure unless I can see that they're going to end up with an ulcer. For everything else, you can decide. Quite often people just want to know a few things, want to see how they, how they land lies, so to speak, and if there's anything going to happen to them if they, say, just ignore things. Uh, and I find that uh, quite, quite nice because uh, it allows you to decide whether you have something done you're not pushed into having something done and nor do I tell you that wearing compression stockings will sort you out. That's, uh, that's, that's just not true. Uh, so I like to give you all your options and then you can decide how you uh, feel. We normally then send you for a pre-assessment, uh, which is just to make sure that I haven't missed anything and check your blood pressure and stuff like that. And then when we give you a, a date for uh, surgery the next time you um, you see me is actually on that day and uh, the treatment itself normally takes 30 minutes or so and most people are in the hospital for maybe 90 minutes so it's a relatively relatively quick next slide these are a, a few pics of kind of what to expect so naturally we give we show good pictures <laughs> and successful treatments but most people uh, the left-hand side picture of before, that's essentially what most varicose veins look like. They nearly always uh, come from the thigh and in particular from a failed valve in the groin. Uh, we would zap that vein, put you in a bandage for a few days or, or maybe more, depending on uh, what your vein looks like. A couple of weeks later, most people, their leg starts to go flat and you can't see much. And then about six weeks later, nearly always the veins have completely gone. Now, there's a slight difference between treating veins for medical reasons and doing anything that's cosmetic. So if you treat them for medical reasons, nearly always two weeks after you have your operation, you have essentially forgotten that I've done anything to you because your vein is gone and your leg feels good. Most people will be back in the gym or playing golf or just being normal. I think it takes about six weeks for your leg to look OK. And that would be for a holiday and nobody to ask you any questions about what's being done. And sometimes if I, they often are a little bit more bruised afterwards because we try our best to get rid of every single uh, bit that's annoying them. So that can often take six weeks to look, what I would say is reasonable uh, to go away and for you to feel comfortable. It can sometimes take a little longer, just depending on the, um, on the, veins, that you, the veins that you have. Some, sometimes you can, Hear adverts where people describe varicose vein surgery as uh, a kind of lunchtime surgery. Yes, uh, certain veins are lunchtime veins. Uh, they're usually very small and short, and people can certainly walk in and walk out. But for most people who have a vein operation with me, I tell them that's going to feel like you've had, uh, you've either exercised like a 5K run or first day with a new trainer in the gym or first football match of the year. That next day feeling where you get up and you certainly know your legs attached, it's not agony. You can certainly do everything, but it does feel a little uncomfortable. And most people will take some kind of painkiller such as Neurofen or Paracetamol. They didn't feel anything, didn't even know I did anything. Most people say it was a little uncomfortable, but nothing um, too special. 
think next we're going to just do a, a patient testimonial. My name is Jo Crossy. I'm 58 years old. Well, it did. It was making my legs more uncomfortable as the years went on, feeling very heavy and tired, um, especially in the hot weather. Um, my feet would um, swell, um, and just generally feeling achy most of the time. Um, I did start working part time, and part of that reason was probably unconsciously thinking, actually, I, I can't keep on my feet all day long, every day. We thought it was worth the, um, the drive to go, um, and especially when it was um, a beautifully new hospital, um, it, was, it was a very pleasant experience, um, and I wouldn't hesitate to go back again if I needed to in the future. My GP referred me on the 22nd of January and I had my consultation with Benenden on the 31st of January so I was quite impressed by that. The operation was very straightforward. You are given a booklet to explain um, what the procedure is. Um, Mr Chaloner who I saw also talked me through it but obviously when you're in consultation it's a lot of information to take in. So I came home and read the leaflet. I also looked um, online for him and he did a very good explanation online. Everything that was in the booklet is exactly what happened on the day you were talked through it and the staff were very um, helpful, supportive and, and talked you through every process. I felt as if I am um, walking into a lovely environment like that, that um, everything was going to be okay, that it would be state-of-the-art um, technology and processes, so I felt very confident that um, I was in good hands. My recovery was, again, like it said on the tin, you know, I had to wear my bandages for five days and then take those off. I couldn't drive for five days, obviously, because they say for insurance purposes. If I had to stop quickly and I, or if I was in an accident, insurance might not um, be so happy if I was wearing bandages. And then I was back to work in a week. Um, it was a bit achy and a bit sore, but they give you advice about putting your feet up whenever you can, putting in local anaesthetics, uh, sorry, rubbing in local um, anaesthetic gels, wearing a support bandage if I needed to. And I did that a few times because the weather was quite warm um, post-surgery, um, so I, I made use of, of those um, devices and advice and it certainly helped. My life now has changed in that I, I'm not feeling the, the, the heaviness in my legs um, and I have been wearing shorts out and about, which I hadn't done before, so it certainly boosted my confidence in terms of that, um, and yes, getting back to running after two grandchildren. If anybody was thinking about having their varicose veins done, I would recommend the Benenden Hospital. Their technology and, and the processes they do, is it's, um, it's just, laser treatment is the way forward um, in terms of not making you lie in a bed, getting you up and getting you mobile. Um, certainly Benenden Hospital is uh, highly recommended as far as I'm concerned. Great, thank you for that interesting presentation, Mr Sweeney. Um, it's now for some questions um, and we have a few in already and so everyone please do send your questions in. Um, the first is, um, they say, what can cause varicose veins in male testes and how can they be treated? Um, that's not quite my specialty, that's a urologist's, but if I tell you that um, guys can get a, um, a thing called a varicocele, which is a uh, testicular varicose vein and that is caused by usually on the left side and it's because of the way that vein drains in your uh, tummy right up near your kidney 
Uh, there are treatments for that, just I don't do them. Uh, but that, uh, and I think they're quite minimally invasive as well. They don't require open operations, but that's quite, uh, that is quite a um, common thing in men. And most times you don't touch them. Interestingly, girls have the same problem, just you can't quite see it. So uh, ladies can have varicosities around and near their ovaries. That's a thing called pelvic congestion. Uh, it's a very well-known problem, can be treated. Uh, and it's often involves quite a lot of ache and pain around period time uh, as the veins dilate because you get a little spike of progesterone at that time and that dilates veins. So if you have a load of varicose veins in your pelvis that you can't see, sometimes that can give you a pretty grim time if you're a girl. For blokes, thankfully, <laughs> we don't have progesterone, so it doesn't quite affect us so much. Uh, but there are there is a very specific uh, thing called a varicose with men. Uh, but it's dealt with by the urologists, uh, not by vascular surgeons. And we have several urologists at the hospital. So if you feel free to call the number below and um, you can speak to one of those for a consultation as well. Um, the second question is from Alan. He had his varicose veins stripped 30 years ago, but now they are starting to reappear, but without pain. Um, are, are laser treatments in the veins likely to regrow in the future? Um, Interestingly, when you have your veins uh, lasered, your risk of recurrence is quite low. It's around about 1% because essentially you're lasering a vein, so it's gone afterwards. But about 10% of people develop a new vein. So it's not absolutely perfect. Stripping veins is different. That has about a 50% recurrence rate because when you pull a vein out, as your body tries to heal itself, it produces new veins. So quite often you get these smaller veins that appear afterwards. And we can still laser those kind of veins. So we nearly always scan you, have a little look, see what's not working, come up with a plan and give it to you. If you've no symptoms and they're not troublesome and your skin is fine, we might tell you that you can leave them alone, that there's nothing dangerous about things. Um, but sometimes people think that their veins are not causing any trouble. And then we point out the discoloration in their skin or the eczema that they have and they pass it off as something they've had for years but it's actually caused by their veins i hope i've answered that question i think so thank you um will a standing desk help someone's varicose veins uh no uh it not, don't necessarily help but they're not necessarily bad because as you move you have a pump action around your ankle and that actually gets blood flying up your leg uh, so in fact sitting is often worse because you kind of crease your veins so they fill up, uh, which is why if you drive a car with varicose veins, sometimes you can end up with quite swollen ankles or cramp. Uh, but so a standing desk though is not bad for varicose veins because most people who are standing at a desk are actually moving a fair bit. Uh, so in fact, um, they're not entirely still. So it's not a bad thing. Great. The next person says they fly a lot for work and their legs itch a lot. Do you have any advice for this? Uh, that could be a varicose vein or it could just be something else. There's loads of different reasons for itching. If you had some varicose veins as well, then they are almost certainly the cause of the itch. And as you've asked about flying, I would just say that there's no problems with flying with varicose veins. It doesn't, it's not something dangerous. And flying has a very low risk of a DVT, despite what people advertise. So you don't necessarily need to wear compression stockings on a plane. Your risk of a DVT on a plane has already been worked out. It's about one in a million. It's quite tiny. In fact, I think you get more trouble putting on very tight stockings. Uh, but if you're flying on a plane and you get itch, or if you're in a, a car and getting itching, that may be related to your veins. Um, or if you stand all day and your legs feel quite sore, most varicose vein symptoms occur at the end of the day because... When you're lying in bed at night, the veins deflate. There's no gravity issue. So when you're trying to work out what's causing, the if varicose veins are causing trouble, normally I ask people, are their legs worse at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day? If it's the end of the day, that's much more likely to be vein related. Um, there are loads of other causes, but um, if, it, if at the end of the day, your legs are worse, a more achy, more itchy, then I think that'll point us towards varicose veins. Okay, thank you. Stuart asks if surgery is compatible with warfarin. Warfarin. Um, they yeah. had three lower left calf DVTs and has varicose, various varicose veins in the same area. 
Okay, so people who are on anticoagulation, we operate on them uh, routinely. It's, we don't stop anticoagulation in general, and we would treat the varicose vein even if people are on warfarin. The problem with the previous deep vein thrombosis is that, that sometimes damages, if you think of that Christmas tree analogy, if the main trunk has been damaged, uh, sometimes the smaller branches are actually vital, so we don't touch them. Uh, so especially in people who've had multiple deep vein thrombosis, sometimes you cannot operate on their veins, but that's unusual. For most people, you, you can treat them. Okay. Um, Lloyd asks, does EVLT just seal the valve or is the laser withdrawn down the, the vein sealing as it goes? Is the uh, sealing always then followed by a um, phlebectomy to hook onto the vein? Uh, so the answer is the whole vein is sealed from the top all the way down as far as we can go. It's usually about 30 or 40 centimeters. Sometimes we do phlebectomies as well. Uh, phlebectomies are small incisions where we break up some of the larger veins to speed up their, uh, to speed up their, uh, I can't think of the word now, but essentially to get rid of them more quickly. Um, the, you don't always have to do phlebectomies. Uh, quite often just the laser on its own gets rid of everything. But sometimes if you have multiple branches, uh, we would do a small little nick in the skin and break the vein and that's a phlebectomy. So I hope that's answered that. Thank you. Um, Lynn says they have hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Yeah. Are there any additional risks they should consider? I think uh, they, they think the grade um, varicose vein is grade three. Um, and it runs from mid thigh to the calf down the inside. Uh, not usually. So I operate on plenty of people with Ehlers Danlos. Uh, they have a slightly uh, greater risk of recurrence. That's the only thing I've noticed. Uh, but essentially, treating the vein is is fine. Um, and I would treat you as, as if you were, uh, you know, a person without Ehlers Danlos. I was going to, I'm trying to avoid saying a normal person, but you know what I mean. Uh, Ehlers Danlos in itself is not something that would. Uh, be a contraindication to having your veins treated. Okay, thank you. Um, Sean has severe discoloration due to varicose skin on their lower leg. Will that ever improve? Uh, it depends. If you get rid of the problem that's causing it, which is usually a vein, you laser the vein, it allows your skin to heal. It depends how far it got. So if it was very badly inflamed, it's a bit like a burn and there are different grades, and sometimes it does leave scarring and um, discoloration, and quite often it decreases a few grades. So it goes from being very obvious to being less obvious, And but quite often if we catch it early enough, uh, it goes back to being completely normal. So it just depends how far it's got before you had the vein treated. Okay, thank you. And um, this person is allergic to surgical stitches. Does the laser treatment involve these? Uh, no, there's no stitching. Uh, very, very rarely we'd ever put a stitch in the skin. Okay. Um, what are the risks involved with this treatment? So the every operation, not only does every operation carry some risk, I think every operation produces a complication, just depends how you classify things. So everyone who has their veins done has a little bit of discomfort. Sometimes they're a bit lumpy, a bit of bruising. They're kind of things I divide the, I divide the post-op period into things that will sort themselves out and things that cause trouble. So the things that cause trouble is developing a deep vein thrombosis following any operation, whether it's a hip repair or an appendix or any kind of gynae procedure. With varicose veins, your risk of a DVT is one per thousand procedures. We are absolutely uh, hell bent on making sure that is zero. So most of the focus of our post-op period is to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, so although it's a very uh, unusual complication, it's the only one that I feel is dangerous. And it's really the only one that makes people regret they ever had an operation. But in Benetton, our risk of that occurring is quite a lot less than one in a thousand. It's a very rare occurrence. That I consider to be a proper complication. The other things, such as being a bit sore or a bit too bruised, I kind of you could either take a few extra painkillers or just wait a little time and that sorts itself out. Yeah, so really from a complication point of view, DVT is all I ever worried about, I worry about. And to give you an idea of comparisons, DVT rate in veins, maybe one in a thousand. Having a hip replaced might be one in 50. Having a baby, one in a hundred. 
breaking a leg while skiing can be as high as one in 10. So they're proper risky uh, problems, but uh, veins relatively not quite risk-free, but uh, usually a very low risk procedure. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, Rebecca says they have horizontal bumpy veins, or they have a horizontal bumpy vein across the back of the thigh, just at toilet seat level. It's very painful. Is this position a concern? They've been told that it comes from internal, so it cannot be treated, question mark. No, that's not necessarily true. That's a very common vein. It usually comes from the groin. Uh, and you can certainly treat that. That's often one that drives people bananas, uh, not just the toilet, but also sitting in a car. Um, and uh, that can be, that's a very common vein to treat. And I think if you have a scan done, you can virtually always treat that. That's not, a, that's not one you'd say no to. No. They then go on to ask, um, how long does the laser treatment last for? And will other veins then take more pressure? Uh, no. So what I always say to people is think of it like a Christmas tree. All the veins are trying their best to get things up and there's one vein not working and it's pouring everything back down like a waterfall. And all the other little veins trying their best are just getting fed up with all this blood pouring back down. The moment you get rid of that vein, everything has a holiday because they now no longer have old blood coming down at all going in the correct direction. And that's why the symptoms disappear. When you laser that vein, it shouldn't come back. There's about a 1% chance of us not lasering the vein properly and it's coming back quickly. But for 99% plus of the time, that's the end. But if, depending on your age, if, you, if I laser someone's vein and they're 18, I will tell them that they have a 10% chance of another vein popping out somewhere that will need an operation in the future. So it's not technically a recurrence, but I describe it as a recurrence because it's a trip back to see a vascular surgeon. But the risk is about one in 10. Um, but from the vein that's treated, I think most surgeons, and sometimes you can advertise it saying, you know, your recurrence rate is tiny. Uh, and that's true. When you laser things properly, they don't come back but you can develop another vein. So occasionally one pops out in the years after you have treatment, but it's much less than the older operation, which was 50% after a few years. Thank you. Um, just a few more questions. Um, Jerry asked if there's, is there a limit to the number of varicose vein operations on one leg? They had flares injected years ago and subsequently stripped twice. Yeah, sometimes I have to say I was one of the junior doctors who used to do all these stripping operations uh, back in the last century, and uh, I didn't really do it very well. It wasn't superbly supervised. And so the actual operations you have can sometimes be a bit uh, hit and miss. And I think sometimes when you scan people, you realize that actually they missed a particular vein. And also they didn't have the advantage of having an ultrasound uh, with them all the time during the operation. So occasionally veins are missed. They didn't spot them the next time they did an operation. So you can have had multiple operations that were effectively useless. Um, so the number of operations you have doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have any more. It sometimes means that they miss something uh, on the first go. And unfortunately, they haven't been able to fix it afterwards. So surprisingly, I often scan people uh, who've had multiple operations and find this very long vein sitting the whole length of the leg and kind of wonder how everyone missed that. But they didn't have the advantage of using an ultrasound. So uh, it's kind of easy for me to say that, uh, but you can then treat it and get rid of uh, vast majority of those veins um, relatively easily. Um, at what point in their development should someone seek treatment? And is it better to wait until they are prominent? Uh, the answer is whenever you're irritated by them. So if they're sore, I'd have them fixed. Some people are told, have all your babies before you ever have your veins treated. Oh, I just think that's mad. You end up with multiple pregnancies with legs that are aching and giving you loads of grief. I think whenever they're bothering you, you can have them fixed. I think if they're sore or the skin is itchy, you definitely should have them fixed. If you just don't like the look, well, that's kind of up to you to whenever, whenever you wish. Smaller veins are much easier and you get a much nicer result. Veins that have been left for 10 years, they sometimes damage the skin a bit, so you don't quite get a perfect result uh, cosmetically. Um, but I would say treat them whenever they're bugging you. Okay. Um, can you treat the veins that look like bruised spiders? Uh, yes, they are. If I tell you that, it's quite easy for me to treat large veins. They get rid of those, make everything look lovely and smooth. 
smooth. Smaller veins are a bit more difficult because it often takes a few treatments. I bruise you each time I treat them, usually with some sclerotherapy, which is little injections. And I think that kind of treatment is a bit like watching paint dry. You're bruised, you're waiting for it to settle down. You come back, I do it again, you're bruised again. So it can sometimes take a couple of months to get a decent, good cosmetic result. But I would say that for most thread veins, you can, if not reduce them, get, you can get rid of them completely. Many people, the initial treatment is quite annoying because it takes a while to get everything looking good. But after that, people sometimes come back for a little MOT every few years, and it's just the odd little thread vein here and there. It's not unusual, especially this time of year, for people just to come back for one session, and I wouldn't see them again for a few years. Um, so the answer is yes, you can certainly treat those type of veins. And just our last question. Um, a few people have actually asked this. Um, if you have diabetes, can you have your veins removed? Yes. If you have diabetes, heart failure, uh, any of those kind of complications, any, you know, it's amazing things that you, you think will stop you having a varicose vein operation. And in fact, many times you should have an operation because if your leg is swollen and itchy and sore and you're a diabetic, the last thing you need is an ulcer because that will send your uh, sugars uh, all over the place. Uh, so many treatments are, uh, many people, uh, even up to, you know, the oldest person I've operated on has been 96. So it's, it's, it's not something that's uh, exclusive to 18 year olds. And in fact, if I tell you the commonest age group that have their varicose veins treated are in their 50s. Uh, it's not necessary. They often have them for years and people notice their veins when they're young. Uh, but people are often in their 50s or 60s when they have their veins on, or older. They always have a few medical problems. Very few people get away uh, scot-free. The other interesting thing is that the timing that people get their veins treated is nearly always when they start blood pressure tablets because tablets like amlodipine relax veins to relax your blood pressure. And that's often the time where you suddenly notice your veins, which were just annoying you to look at, suddenly give you loads of grief. It's often the veins dilate a little bit with amlodipine. So the answer to that question is almost never would I refuse to do a vein operation on someone. Remembering it's nearly always done under local. It's a relatively straightforward procedure. Uh, I would say if you had multiple medical problems, then it would need to be a medical need to have the vein treated. Uh, but to be honest, you'd be quite surprised. The vast majority of people who come to me with varicose veins don't come because they don't like the look of them. They come because they've had them for years and they've just finally started to get symptoms. And they usually go for a couple of years with sore, achy legs, especially in summer. And then normally, as the uh, days get a bit brighter and the sun appears again, they say, this year, I can't take any more of this itching or swelling or cramping. So it's interesting that um, it's often pe people don't come the first time they ever see a varicose vein. That's the reason why their average age is a little older than you might imagine. And everyone who arrives nearly always has on some kind of medication or has had a couple of problems before uh, they get to see me. Great, thank you. So um, that's all of our questions. Um, thank you very much for everyone for submitting your questions. It's provided a really interesting Q&A session, I believe. Um, if you'd like to discuss or book your consultation, Chelsea from our private patients team will be available to take your call this evening until 8 p.m or she and her colleagues are available between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. Um, as you can see on the screen, we are offering a discount for joining the session for the next seven days. Um, you'll receive a short survey at the end of this session and be really grateful if you could spare a few minutes to let us have your feedback as it helps influence future events. And please visit our website to sign up our range of other events in April and May. So on behalf of our expert team at Benden Hospital, Mr. Sweeney and myself, I'd like to say thank you for joining us today and we hope to hear from you very soon. So thank you very much and goodbye. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>